What is going on, comic fam? It's your boy, the bearded comic bro, joining me again. It's my buddy, Boof. Welcome hey. back, man. Hey. Uh, what was that? Hey. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> we are back for <sighs> another episode of Craft and Comics. Good to be back. It is. But before I let you talk about what we're doing, gotta know what craft are you bringing to the table today oh i got a good one and uh i don't know if people have seen this before the official craft and comics beer koozie with bearded and boof yeah available for purchase wherever bearded comic bro merch is sold i believe <laughs> nope those are exclusive <laughs> oh they are okay oh cool then then i this is like you, you talk limited variants and limited stuff this this is is a, like, those I are have... limited variants however i feel like if there was ever a push for people like i need a craft and comic scoozy we can make that work Very so right good. now those so, are exclusives today uh you know just Really bringing in some strong IPA game today. I have Arctic Panzerwolf from Three Floyds. Three Floyds has been in Massachusetts for I think just about two years. And I remember getting this when I saw the Patriots play in Indy. And of course, when I vacation, I always pack light in my suitcase, but I bring an extra suitcase inside my regular suitcase specifically for bringing back beer. You know, I bring extra shoes. I put the bomber bottles inside the shoes because for the beer you can't get at home, you've got to bring it back with you. Yeah. And uh, Arctic Panzerwolf was the best beer that I had in Indianapolis. I mean, Three Floyds, Zombie Dust, you know, that that's yep. the big gun. But there was only one of these on the shelf. I figured it had to be good. The shopkeeper told me it flies off. This is a dank, bitter, earthy, grassy IPA. And it's not a juice bomb. It's not one of those unfiltered ones because, you know, you can you can see through it. There's a good amount of light getting through this. And, you know, I, I love a juice bomb. I love the stone fruits, the citrus, all that stuff. But it's nice to change that up and just get a diesel resinous IPA, which Three Floyd kills here. And just the can art, like that's a monstrous wolf there. I mean, this is like, boom, that's. Yeah, that's a thing of beauty. That's werewolf by night action right there is albino brother. Absolutely. And I am bringing one of Columbus own land grant because, you know, we're talking about, you know, when life is hard sometimes. And so, you know, I'm thinking when life hands you lemons. Oh, fantastic. Lemon glow. So it is a citrus pale ale and it is Bag nabbit good. It's tasty. Um, see, I love um I definitely love the fruity style beers, as you guys know from watching the show and other shows where I have drinks on it. I love sour beers. This is not one of those, but it definitely has those tones of that lemon. And look at that beautifulness. That's a lemon drop right there for you. Just a, a crushable light pale yep. ale. You know, you get the hop presence, but it's smooth. It's not overbearing. You can maybe have a couple of them without knocking you down too. Which is which is nice. It's it kind of is like when things feel dark and are rough, you're like, hey, at least I've got a beer that's cheerful. <laughs> wow. You call up that company right now and you tell them to put that on a billboard. Right? Your right. face. This is sponsored by Bearded Coming Bro. <laughs> When things are dark and rough, at least you have this beer. That's right. I'm like, what is, where is that from? So we've kind of hinted at it. If people looked at the title of this video, they already know. They've seen the thumbnail. They have an idea of what we're talking about. But Boof, tell the people what we are talking about today on Crafting Comics. Well, we're, we're talking about the state of the world now relative to the state of various comic book worlds. Sure, it's tough. People are sick. People are not getting along. Tensions are high. You got to wear masks to go out in public. There's lines everywhere, limited capacity. But is it really that hard to put on a mask to go to the grocery store when other worlds might have it a little rougher, when people would be desperate to put on a mask or to get their groceries delivered? 
You know, there are plenty of comic book fictional worlds where the futures are much more bleak than we are dealing with right now. Yeah, and that's kind of that's kind of what we were talking about. We're like, yeah, we get it. We are in this a pandemic and everyone is done talking about it. And we're like, hey, let's do a video about that anyways. But this idea of like, let's look on the bright side. Things could be worse than they are. And in the world of, we're like, to make us feel better, let's look at things that could be worse, <laughs> right? Like, and this idea of what comic book worlds would you be like, yeah, I don't think I'd want to live in that world. And so we're going to talk about three different comic book worlds that were like this would be pretty rough yeah you and i are sitting at home right now drinking beer talking about comic books on the internet we're doing okay (laughs) so with that being said cheers and hey let's talk comics i can feel your anger it gives you focus we're back we are we are talking comic book worlds that we don't think we'd want to live in that are pretty much worse off than us and so we like i said earlier we narrowed down the three uh and boof why don't you tell us what is the first uh universe comic book universe that we're going to be talking about uh we're going to be talking about the world of eclipse from image written by zach kaplan brilliantly illustrated by giovanni tempano in fact I had turned you on to this book when I heard you were interviewing Kaplan on your show about his Join the Future book, yeah. which is an amazing alternate bleak future, but just, you know, it didn't work in today's conversation. Because he created an even bleaker, worse future. <laughs> right. It's, it's, where, it's a world where SPF 100 is still not going to do you any good. In the world of Eclipse something happens to the sun where the solar energy becomes so intense in this event that people have dubbed the flare. You literally cannot go out into the sunlight because it will kill you within seconds. It will melt your skin and boil your insides within seconds. Unless you have these like dope astronaut suits that <laughs> worn by people that the government you know, agencies call ice men. Right. I mean, like you can be outside like, you know, if you under have a building yeah, or, or just, you know, out of the sun. Yeah. So, and we don't know too much about the world, how it functions. Like we know right. the, 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 you know, kind of the, the big, the big bad is, is a corporation solarity and, and they power everything with this new wave solar tech that they, we find out they just discovered after the fact they didn't even like create it, but we're seeing people live underground. We don't know about uh, farming or the animals or plant life they don't go into that which is kind of cool like we don't have to busy right. ourselves with worrying about how the world functions we only know that it does like it they just have, does yeah they have schools they have nightclubs like people are like getting you know getting down and having a good time there's you know there's the rebels and there's the, you know the government aspect of it like people are able to live i'm pretty sure i could function in this world you know i i don't really tan that well anyway you know, yes, it would suck not being able to see the sun, but I, I could be down with living in this world because there's really no other way. Yeah, I was going to ask you, and I think we I think we posed this question to each other and also to the viewers at home. Do you think you could live in this world? You say yes, like you feel like you could. So, and I and I think I agree. Do I, would I want to live in a world with no sun? No, but I do think this would be the easiest of worlds that we're going to talk about for me to survive in. Absolutely. I to mean, a degree, because yeah. there still is danger and there are still that people that are trying to punish people. And so it depends on, depends on if I'm what side of, if people will care about me or not. <laughs> right. Because I feel yeah. like you're only going to get attacked if you uh, fit into people's agenda. So Correct. I, think, like, I think I could fly under the radar and be okay. Mm-hmm. Like, I wouldn't just, like it, but I could do it. So Eclipse, we both feel like, yeah, we could. Let absolutely. us know what you think, you if you could survive at home. And I think the next one we're going to talk about is probably the most popular world that people would probably be familiar with. Yeah. And I, that is bum, 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 the walking dead. So the world of walking dead, you, whether it's comics or the show, people know the world of walking dead. You got zombies. You're in a zombie apocalypse. And that's where it's like, but this, I feel like the people, the 
in this world are a lot more aggressive than they are in the world of Eclipse. Where I said I could feel kind of under the radar, fly under the radar, because unless you're working for certain corporations or you have these certain abilities, people probably don't care about you too much in that. It seems like in the world of Eclipse, where in the world of Walking Dead, we find out pretty quickly that you, you got zombies that are coming for you and you got other survivors that are coming for you. Right. There's there's the external aggressor, if you will, the, the right. new threat, the zombies. But then you have people who are now just terrible people. They may have been terrible people before, but now they're worse because unlike Eclipse, now, at least to start, there's no power. There's no sustainable food, which at least in Eclipse, I'm pretty sure there was accessible nutrition yeah. uh water right away if they ever went without it at all right where that the the societal collapse in the walking dead was total right away and they had to rebuild i don't think we're showing an example of anything that was left functioning everything had to start again and you know whether it be i think maybe we saw in the tv show not the comic where the group you know rick and his crew were eating dog food and, and Rick freaked out and he refused to do it. But it, it's a long journey. People, even me, you know, I'll, I'll just imaginary scenario. I'm, I'm entering a building, you know, what sort of zombie fortification is this? You know, what, what would happen? I even talked about it with old coworkers and, you know, just to, you know, kind of joke around. But when you think of it, everyone thinks they can, they can make it happen. But if you see a creature eating the face of someone that you sit next to at work in accounting, that maybe has an effect on someone. And all your quick thinking, all your I can be king of the zombie apocalypse might fall right out the window. Yeah, I feel like this is a debate that everyone always has of like, oh, I could definitely survive a zombie apocalypse. Mm, Sure. And I think you have to ask yourself like, okay, what phase of you could survive it? And what I mean by that of like, could young 21 year old bearded survive it? Possibly. Could older bearded who has probably has gout and, <laughs> and has a wife and then two little kids now with him, like that he has to look out for and protect. And it's not just me against the world. Like, but, you know, it's like trying to figure out, like, what what constitutes, like, you know, where your priority shift and could you do it on your own? You know, would you be able to survive? And if something happened to, you know, a kid, would you would you sacrifice yourself? And things like that. Like, I think when you throw those factors in and then you just throw the the horribleness of the other survivors that you see in there. And like you said, you're when you're rebuilding a society from scratch is a lot different than like, oh, let's shift to now we have to be d- nighttime people, not daytime people. <laughs> Correct. Yeah, let's let's make sure that these n- former walking people don't eat my children and then let me figure out how to get some fresh water and, and maybe half a granola bar to get us through the week. Right, and well, then still surviving people that then want to take my fresh water and my granola bars from Correct. me. Yes. Like, good luck with that. So I guess I suppose the question is, you you started last time, so I'll go this time. Do I think I could survive the Walking Dead world? Um, if I'm being genuinely honest, I think I could survive. But the realness is with my family, I don't know how well my family would do. And then that's where it comes to like, I don't think I would survive because of I got two little kids at home and they're not going to be very quiet if a zombie's creeping through a building or. Right. Absolutely. You, like, you and I both have two young daughters. Yeah. And I, I actually, I've thought about this. I'm like, yeah, I have like these little ball peen hammers. I could give each of them one of those, but can they strike a, a, a zombie in the head hard enough to, you know, smash that brain in? I'm not sure right now, but I do know and this is why I think I would give myself some credit for surviving that my mind would switch into that primal state. And, you know, I'm, I'm a tool guy. I got lots of, you know, interesting toys, electronic and, and not that I could use those tools 
you know, to fend off the, the zombies, you know, easily portable stuff. You know, I got my backpack full of water and, and our meds and, you know, my garden claw and my garden weasel and a hand axe. And, you know, I'm sure the same would uh, be with, you know, you and, you know, John's comics with kids and anyone who's got kids out there probably turn into a savage trying to protect your kids and right? your family. And that's where it's like, you know what? I, it'd be interesting because I feel like it's a wild card because just like in uh, Walking Dead, you don't know who's going to survive and the people you think would, won't. And, you know, it'd be interesting. So I guess we're posing the question to you at home as well. Yeah. Think Could you, you all make it? Do you think you survive a zombie apocalypse? And I want you to think about your current state. Could you survive a zombie apocalypse? So we've talked to clips. So we've talked about living in a world where you have to live in darkness and not in the sun. We've talked about a zombie apocalypse. Boof, what is the final comic book world that we are talking about? Uh, totally different than the other two. The fantasy world of die. You know, people know sword and sorcery, you know, and, and this is not quite, you know, a Lord of the Rings world. This is a little more savage and aggressive. You know, this is a world where some young kids, 10, 11 years old, played as a kid. They got sucked into the world. One of their friends was trapped there. They all but one escaped. And then they go back in at our age, you know, mid 30s to early 40s again. And we're talking about, could you survive it nowadays? Dude, I, I don't know. Now, one, one of the kickers is, which might give any one of us an edge, is that you're necessarily, not necessarily you, when you go right. into this world. Yeah. You might be immediately transformed into a mage or a barbarian with those skills. You actually might be the bearded comic cis in this world because people, you know, they, they change genders, they change, you know, uh, appearances. You don't know. So who knows? It's, I have to give it an I'm not sure because that is so wild. Uh, you know, goblins, dragons, black magic, you know, just generally awful people in this world because it's essentially a game world. Right. Yeah, this is one of those where because there, I feel like this is the hardest one to pick because there's so much unknown, right? In this world, like mm -hmm. at least in The Walking Dead, you're like, okay, it's America, it's in the current state we're in, just with no power and zombie. like you can visualize that. And Eclipse, you can be like, oh, it's just flip flop the world's upside down. But here in Die, you're like, this is a a fantasy world that you know you're not familiar with, you know. Especially we're talking to at least in the first trade, you know, here of uh, mm -hmm. what they're going through and what they're dealing with in this world that Karen Gillan has written and you don't know like they they got to pick their kind of characters at the beginning of the in the first issue and who they wanted to be so I guess if we got to pick who we would be into this world to a degree like that could be interesting yeah but again know. you're thrown into an environment that you're not familiar with you don't you have to learn trial by air right of figuring out who's right who's wrong who can help you and hurt you in this world Mm -hmm. um there's just so many factors i feel like this would be one of those worlds where i wouldn't survive because i feel like i'm gullible and then someone's gonna pull like a, oh hey this is me and they're gonna be like evil demon zombie baby killer people that like just eat me up and said and you know like i feel like i'd get tricked right away and i'm like dang it so I don't know. There's so what, what is your, what's your experience in, in worlds like these? What's your experience with like D and D see, that's, and, and knowledge of fantasy worlds? See, and I don't magic have much, stuff? I don't have much knowledge of fantasy worlds, right? Like I, I haven't okay. dabbled in D and D stuff. I've, um, you know, I've most fantasy worlds I've been is like middle earth or Narnia. Like those are my <laughs> fantasy worlds. Uh, and I feel like I could do better in Elise Narnia. Maybe not so much Middle Earth, but. <laughs> Die is a world where people would wear like Aslan skin as a coat. Like that's, yes. that's the kind of world this is. Yeah. Yeah. So that'd be tough. So you're, you're, a, you're, a, you don't know. I'm a, 
I don't know, but I feel like I want to make it. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to use my edge. While I've never played D&D, I was heavy into Magic the Gathering. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I read, uh, you know, those TSR Dragonlance series. Like, I, I, I know the world. And this is, you know, just obviously I'm a 40-year-old man just <laughs> telling you how, how well I could function in, in a fantasy world where I'm fighting for my life and that of my family. So, you know, take that with a grain of salt or complete legitimacy, as you will. I, I feel I have a fighting chance. Well, and also it seems like a lot of the characters in this, you know, these characters, they get transported without the family. So the chances of Correct. the family being with you, I feel like is less. So it's more of, I would almost, but this is more of a focus of you than even your family, um, because this was a group, but this almost be like if our group of, you know, us, uh, get together as comic nerds and we're like all right let's play a game and then we get sucked into it um <laughs> right where and whereas our families are now talking to the police because we've been missing for you know days months and then years yeah because they were i think that the big first they were like two years and so this mm -hmm. that's crazy yeah. so so gang could you survive the world of die could you survive the fantasy realm that karen gillen has developed and would you live right Ooh, I see what you did there. I see what I, you did. I see what you did. Uh-huh. And, okay. and there's tons of others, right? There are. There's this, there were so many. I mean, even, even the small list that we came up with, there's so many others that are horrible. Um, and I'm sure, you know, there's plenty of others that are fantastic too. So I guess the question then that we would pose to you all watching this at home is, let us know if you could survive the three worlds we created. And I want to know, we want to know what, comic book world would be harder to survive in than any of the three we listed what what would be harder I, i'm curious to see what you would say below um yeah i'm i admit you know hopefully there's some some books we haven't read because i yeah. love to dive into those i mean i love any sort of alternate history you know i i love what if i love else worlds you know the walking dead you know alternate future where it transforms you know modern day into something fantastical and bleak and the people adapt in crazy ways i, I want to read those books so let me know what those are oh without a doubt um and gang be on the lookout because we are planning to we got some more series ideas that we're going to be doing for uh mm -hmm. craft and comics uh we are we're going to be hitting our stride finding some more times to put these videos out and with that being said Hopefully you can find some time to curl up, grab a book, and nerd out. Cheers, Cheers everybody. Cheers.